All right. So good evening, everybody. We're um, we're starting on 68B on the bottom, and our topic for discussion today is uh, what do you call a mistake? You know, there's different kinds of mistakes, right? Um, the, yesterday, my wife put some sambusek in the oven. Should I have to go to a meeting? Can you take it out in 15 minutes? Uh, of course, I forgot, right? Um, so is that, what is that, is that considered a mistake? You know, because she told me, but I did forget because, you know, I got involved. Um, on the other hand, I, you know, was kind of negligent. I should have remembered. So there's a difference between that forgetting and that mis- kind of mistake. And if I never knew that there was any sambusek in the oven, then it's totally not my fault, right? So there are different, there are mistakes and there are mistakes. There are mistakes of different levels. Um, and uh, so sim- similarly, you know, if you get a bill in the mail and, uh, and you don't pay it, um, you know, there's, so there could be different reasons why you don't pay a bill. Let's say maybe you didn't receive it at all, right? Because they didn't send it. So, you know, that's a mistake. Uh, or you did receive it, but let's say you received it and you didn't really realize that there would be a late penalty, right? So you say you received it, but it didn't say a late penalty on the bill, so therefore you're not you shouldn't charge me a late penalty, right? Is that a valid argument? Is that a is that considered a mistake if you know that something uh, you were you were supposed to do but just didn't know what the penalty was? All right. So these uh, get into a lot of very interesting conceptual um, uh, topics. Really, our Mishnah is one of the most conceptually interesting Mishnayot um, in all in, in all of Shas. Usually the Mishnah gives you particular cases, and then you have to come up with the klal, with the with the fundamental principle. But here um, uh, is uh, gives us a fundamental principle, and that generates a lot of very interesting um, ideas. Uh, one correction from yesterday: I mentioned that the opening sugya of many prakim uh, is often from the from the later stamedic layer. Uh, in this case, all right, we did see that there is a an amara mentioned. And the Talmud Yerushalmi actually has a very similar discussion. Why does it say here, Klal Gadol? And other places it does not say uh, Klal Gadol. And uh, the third and final answer of the Bavli is the main answer in the Talmud Yerushalmi. Um, uh, but what is true is that it focuses on the form and uh, then goes into the content. All right. So today we're going to be discussing the opinion of uh, Munbaz about um, liability. And then on the second, the end of the sugya, we're going to be talking about um, an interesting case of someone lost in the desert and has no idea what day it is. How does, how does that person keep Shabbat? Okay, so um, let's get right into Munbaz. Munbaz is a colleague of Rabbi Akiva, and they have a fundamental discussion about the case of someone who, is, um, who grows up as a baby in... in uh, uh, taken captive as a baby, and he grows up not doing anything about Judaism, or someone who's converted among Gentiles, which is also a very interesting case. How do you get converted if he's among Gentiles, <laughs> right? Uh, it's, uh, it reminds me of the story of Gershom and the Seishas, one of the, the patriot rabbi of the Sher- of Sheriff Israel. Uh, during the Revolutionary War, he went to Philadelphia because he didn't want to be uh, with, uh, with the loyalists. But there was someone getting married in the congregation who was a loyalist in the state of New York. And so he went in there, did the wedding, and secretly went out at night. So it was like, you know, Betin goes into some uh, enemy territory, converts someone, right? And then leaves without them knowing anything. And so what, what do we do with that person? When that person does come and learns about uh, Shabbat, are they liable or not? So the first opinion of Biakiva and the majority opinion says, even if you never knew about Shabbat, you're still liable. Okay, that's interesting. Um, however, Munba says, Patur, if you knew about it once and forgot about it, then you have to bring a korban chatat. But if you never knew about it at all, so it's not your fault, right? Even though a chatat is for a mistake, it's only for a mistake that there's some knowledge, there's some negligence. And he compares it to uh, Mezid. He says, after all, both are called chatat. So there has to be, even if you have some knowledge of it, and you forgot, that's when you bring, only when you have some knowledge and you forgot, that's when you bring Koban Chatat. In Talmudic just, times, in Talmudic times, do they have to te- uh, give some education to potential Gerim, or they just did it uh, on, on the spur of a moment? Fantastic question. And it's in Talmud in Masechet Yevamot. It says that you teach a Ger some of the basics, some of the very stringent so the laws, basics. a few of the, of, the, of the minor laws, but you don't, you don't tell, can't teach them all right. of Shas, before, the Shabbat is a basic fundamental law. They should be taught that. 
It could be, maybe the, maybe his teacher chose to teach him a different fundamental law, right? Um, um, but also, you're right. That's why I was talking about such a case when he was taken captive. And maybe it was a betting of hed hed yotot. Maybe there were unlearned judges who, who didn't do the right procedure. So even though they didn't do the full procedure, it's, it's still considered a convert, uh, except that, you know, this guy just never, he wasn't around Jews. If he was lived near Jews, he would know that they're doing something different on Shabbat. Okay. Um, um, Rabbi, yes? Uh, sorry, also, I thought maybe maybe the idea of living, uh, you know, not among Jews or living among Gentiles is like indicating like a time not in Eretz Israel where like even like today it might be considered a convert among Gentiles if someone converted in Brooklyn. Like maybe something like that. Yeah, I would think they have to have some some knowledge. Uh, anyone anyone in New York knows what, what Shabbat is about. Right. Okay, so we're at the bottom of the page uh, where we left off. My Tama de Munbaz. We want to find what is the source of Munbaz, who says that even if you know something, only if you know something about it, uh, it's, uh, you have to bring a korban chatat. Uh, Torah achat yelachem la bishkaga usmichle. I'll bring up the Pesukim so that we can see them together inside. And uh, we see here. This is talking about um, here. If someone makes a mistake, uh, and, and violates a law, I'm um, sorry, I think I'm in the wrong place. I'm 29, sorry. Okay. Did you share your screen? Yes, I didn't. No, I don't think so. I have the PDF open in the Gemara, but I don't see your screen. Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. So, uh, okay, we're in uh, chapter 15. It says, Ha'ezrach. Right, the context is uh, different laws. If someone makes, uh, makes, does a sin by mistake, he has to bring a korban. Right, that's the context here. And everyone has to do this. Torah um, achat yelachem. There's one law for everybody, for someone who does bishkaga. And then the next pasu goes on to a different case. If someone does it on purpose, defiantly, right, then So we see distinction here. This is Shogeg, it brings Korban Chatat. This is Mezid, who gets Karet. But notice that it says Torah Achat Yelachem. The Peshat here is that there's one law for the Ged and for the resident and for the citizen. But if you read it in context, you can read it like this. Right, there's going to be a Torah, there's something in common to the, someone who does it by mistake and someone who does it on purpose. And so that is what um, is, uh, Munbaz is picking up on. Okay, good. So again, here, what is the reason of Munbaz? Because it says, and right next to it, it says, so it's making a Hekesh comparison between uh, someone who does it by mistake and someone on purpose. So just like one who, who does it on purpose, he knows that it's not allowed. So too, even someone who does it by mistake, he knows that it's not allowed. You can be called unwitting, even if you know that it's not allowed, right? Uh, okay, so we'll see what does that mean? Like, what don't you know then? But Abanan, Hi, Torah, Achat, my avd, my Avdile. Hold on. What would what would the rabbis do with that very same pasuk? Because look, that's a nice connection there. Mi ba'ale lehu lech de lech de makri le Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi libre Torah Achat yelachem la ose bishkaga. Um, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi was once teaching uh, Chumash to his son, and he was reading this pasuk, and this is what he said. It says that pasuk, and it says ki tishku velo tasu et kol misvata ele. If you do something by mistake, it also says, I never shared this right next to it, you do something on purpose. And they are all connected to Avodah Zarah because someone who does Beyad Rama, Hashem Megadef, right? So that's connected to Avodah Zarah. Malalan Davashe Chaim al Zedono Karot, Karet, Vishigato Hatat. Of called Davashe Chaim al Zedono Karet, Val Shigagato Hatat. That when do you bring a Korban Hatat? 
for a halacha that if, if you do it on purpose, you would have, he would have the punishment of karet. Okay, uh, now that's when you bring khatat. You don't bring khatat for everything across the board. Mm-hmm. Those th- these go together. I'm just going to mute everybody so we get. Um, okay, okay. Those, that's what he learns from that, that pasuk from. All right, good. Bela munbaz shegaga bemai. Now back to munbaz. In what way is this a mistake? If he knew that it was that it was prohibited, kegon sheshagag be korban. Oh, you know what he didn't know? He didn't know that he would have to bring a korban if he does it by mistake. You know, he knew it wasn't allowed, but he didn't know all the levels of punishment. It sounds like even if he did know that, it gets cut in for doing it on purpose. If he didn't know that you bring korban for doing it by mistake, then also he, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to bring it. Um, okay, I'm going to read that later. Ve'ela, uh, okay. she got korban, lo shema shegaga. Sorry, according to the majority view of the rabbis, they say just because you didn't know what the consequences are for doing it by mistake, that doesn't make it a mistake. You knew that it wasn't allowed. Okay. Now, according to the rabbis, what does you know? What do you have to not know? So there's a machloket among the amoraim, the biochanan. Remember before in the previous, chap, previous page, Rabbi Yochanan agreed with Munbaz. So there's a close connection between Rabbi Yochanan and Munbaz. Rabbi Yochanan amar, kevan she shagag bekaret, afalpi she hezid belav. It means that he didn't know that the punishment is karet, even though he knows it's not allowed. Okay, uh, so that's a little bit um, one step under Munbaz, right? Munbaz says, even if he knows the punishment of karet, but he doesn't know the punishment for doing by mistake is khatat. Now, Rabbi Yochanan says, if he doesn't know the full punishment of karet for doing it on purpose. The Shakish says, you only get to bring a korban khatat if you didn't know at all um, that it was not allowed. If you knew it was not allowed, even if you didn't know the punishment, then you're going to get karet, right? It's only if you had no idea. In other words, you know, the case of my case, when if I didn't know that there was any music there at all, then I'm off the hook. But if I knew some music but forgot the time, no good. Okay. Amar Ava, my Ta'amad Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. What's the source for Rish Lakish that says you have to not even know that it's a sur at all? Amar Kera lo te'asena bishkaga ve'ashem ad she'ishkog belav ve'charet sheba. When it says you made a mistake about something that cannot be done, it says the two words together, shagaga and Hashem, which sounds like both that which uh, the, re- the consequences for doing it by mistake and the consequences for doing it on purpose, he doesn't know either of them. He doesn't know it at all. So he doesn't know that it's, if he doesn't, he doesn't know anything, he doesn't know any consequence at all. He doesn't even know that it's not allowed. But Rabbi Yochanan, hai kerad Rabbi Yeshua ben Lakish, my avid le, what is Rabbi Yochanan going to do about this, this pasuk? Um, uh, the different pasuk, pasuk this, this pasuk came out from Vayikra, that says, if someone's a mishumad, if he's a, an apostate, a, re, a rebellious person, and he happens to also not know that uh, lighting a fire on Shabbat is not allowed, okay? And so he goes and lights a fire, and then he wants to bring a korban. You tell him, no, you can't bring a korban. You were violating all the laws on purpose anyway. Right? And so Mishumad is out. So only Amad, it's only a regular person, not a Mishumad. The Bishimon ben Elazar agrees with the law, but derives it from a different Pasuk. Mishum and Bishimon, Ashe lo te'asena bishkaga ve'ashem. That Pasuk that we're talking about. Hashab mida'ato, mebi korban al shigato. Lo shab mida'ato, eno mebi korban al shigato. Someone who's a Mishumad in the past state, who would make teshuvah and wants to do better, that person has the right bring a korban hatat to atone. But if he's not doing that, then he cannot, uh, if he's not going to make teshuvah, he cannot bring a korban. And so Rabbi Yochanan uses this pasuk that combines shigaga and Hashem and Hasham to learn this law uh, regarding uh, the, regarding the uh, apostate. Okay, so now everybody figured out how, what they do with each of the pasukim, and now we know the source, uh, both of Munbaz and the Yochanan's opinion and the Shakish's opinion. Uh, which are each each one different levels of forgetfulness. But now we're going to quote the next Mishnah that we haven't learned yet, but uh, you 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 uh, probably know what it is. Tanan avot melachot arba'im It says there are four, 39 categories 
of Avot. I mean, one time you asked, is this usual that the rabbis uh, count on the day instead of 39, 40 minus 1? So it's like you, Roman numerals. It's what? Right? It's like Roman, Roman numerals. numerals. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I L. Yeah. That's interesting. And I haven't thought of that. Very good. Ba. Well, and over there, we have already discussed, you know, even though this is coming up in a future sugya, this, uh, this sugya is, uh, later, is later than that sugya that, we'll, we, that we will see. We said about that, minyana lamali, why bother giving me a number? Just list the, list the 39. Why do you have to start off and say, there are, these are 39? I can count by myself. Amar v'yochanan, she'im asa'an kulan be'alem ahad, chayav al kol achat ve'achat. Rabbi Yochanan says, this teaches us that if you had one episode of forgetfulness, right, you didn't know, you know, you didn't know today was Saturday, um, and you do all the mitz- all the melachot, it's a little hard to do. You got to go and, you know, plow and thresh and right, make bread and bread, and you got to go get a, kill, a, a, kill a, 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 an animal and uh, turn it into leather and write. Okay, but if you manage to do all of them, you'd have to bring 39 hata'ot. And we said over there, how could that be that you violate all of them? Well, you don't know anything, right? You knew zero melachot, bizdon shabbat v'shigat melachot, right? I mean, if you don't know anything that's, any, any, any of the third melachot, then you don't know about shabbat at, at all. So it must be that he didn't know was, today was shabbat. Um, uh, sorry, he knew. We said, how could it be, bizdon shabbat, that um, he knew it was shabbat, and so he's, uh, he's doing it by, on purpose, but he doesn't know about any of the melachot. That's what we said there, right? Which is kind of strange. Now, Now, we can explain that discussion that we had there according to the Biochanan, because he said, even if I know that this is not allowed, but I didn't know that the punishment is karet, then I still bring korban chatat. So this person, he could know the whole list of melachot, but he didn't know that the punishment for them is karet. And he does all of them. He has to bring 39, 39 chataot. So we can find the case that makes sense. However, for Resh Lakish, who said, Adi yishkog belav ube karet, they are led ale the Shabbat bemai. Resh Lakish, who says, in order to bring a chatat, your mistake has to be that you don't know about any punishment at all. You don't even know that it's, that it's uh, prohibited. Then what kind of, how could there be this case? If you don't know not one of the three melachot, then in what sense do you even know anything about Shabbat? And we find an ingenious answer, the Ada b'tchumin ba'alibad rabbi akiba, t'chum Shabbat, walking 2,000 amot outside of, the, outside of your city, uh, is considered asur medoraita according to the bi akiba. There's a machoket about it. And so this is not one of the 39 melachot. And so this person, he doesn't know, not one of the 39 melachot, but he does know this one thing that you can't go outside the city. And if we follow the Be'akiva, so we found one thing that he know he would know about Shabbat. So in that sense, he knows about Shabbat, but doesn't know about any melachot. And so we found a case where we can justify that discussion, both according to the Biochanan and according to Resh Lakish. Very strange answer. Uh, it's a possible answer. All you need is one possibility. Yeah, no, it, it breaks their system, right? Because all of a sudden now you have, well, it's not one of their amalachot, but it's a the oraita, and where did that come from, and where does it fit into the system? Right, right. Well, now, and, yeah. He, um, said, I, he, knows, he knows yeshiva, but doesn't know what yeshiva, doesn't know what yeshiva means. Right, okay, good. I mean, I, I, I would I, I, I could suggest something else, that Desh Lakish might be earlier than that, than that discussion. Maybe he would disagree with the entire uh, diuk there. Um, also, what is considered on, on purpose? Is it like if you don't know and then you do it or if you do it like almost like saying like in spite, spitefully, maybe that's more on purpose than... Right. Uh, that's what this has said before. The Mishumad is doing it spitefully. So if he's spiteful and he's doing, you know, he's trying to do every Melacha and this one he didn't know about, he can't bring a right. Quran to saying, oh, I didn't know about it. You were trying right. to do it spitefully. You, anyway. you don't get... To bring a korban chatat is a privilege that you can get to bring this and then wipe away the, even the negligence part of it. Right, it's like a performance in a way. Right. So, yeah. Now, and yet another b'raita that we're going to test out. Man tana leha. Who could be the author of the, this b'raita that says, Tanur banan, shagag baze u baze, zeu shogeg hamur batorah. If you made a mistake both regarding uh, that today is Shabbat and that 
um, you didn't know that, that these malachot. So then for sure, everyone agree, that's talking about, that's the Shogay case. Hezid mm-hmm. beze, zohi mezid amor batara. If you knew it was today was Shabbat, and you knew that lighting a fire is prohibited, for sure, that's mezid, that's for sure, right? Shabbat, what if the, you have the combination of the two? Shagag b'Shabbat vezid b'Melachot, or shagag b'Melachot vezid b'Shabbat. O she'amar, yodea ani she'malacha zo asura, aval eni yodea she'chayavim aleha korban o lo, chayav. So we have a case, interesting case here where, right, if he knew, he didn't know, he knew it was Shabbat, but didn't know this, that lighting a fire is not allowed. But he knew lighting a fire is not allowed, but then it was Shabbat. Or if he knew that it was Shabbat, and he knew lighting a fire is not allowed, but he didn't know that you get a, you have to bring a korban, to, um, uh, right? Then he's then, um, Olo, Chayav, that person brings a korban. Well, that opinion must be Keman, Kemun Baz. That's exactly what Mun Baz said. That Munba said, even if you know it's not allowed, and um, you know it's Shabbat, and you have, and you know it's karet, right? But you didn't know that if you had done it by mistake, you would bring you bring korban chatat. Even in that case, you can it's called a mistake, and you bring korban chatat. Okay, good. So we can fit that into Munbaz, um, who's uh, who's the one that makes says shogeg as close as possible to mezid. Rabbi Yochanan is a little bit less. Amar Abaye, hakol modim bishvat bitur. A Shabbat Bitui is a, a swear. You say, I swear I'm not going to uh, eat eggs tomorrow. And so everyone agrees that uh, Shabbat Bitui, um, that you don't bring a Korban unless you don't know it, anything at all. In other words, you have to forget that I made, I forgot that I swore that tomorrow and I go and eat eggs, right? And say, oh, now I, I realized I forgot that I swore. Everyone agrees that you need that level of forgetfulness. If let's say I, I remember that I made a swear, but I forgot that there's a punishment for making a, making a swear. No, that's not good enough. I can't get bring korban. That's, that's, too, that's too much on purpose. And so when it says, he says, Abayah says, everybody agrees. So what does he mean by everybody? Who's everybody? Um, man, Rabbi Yochanan. So Rabbi Yochanan, even Rabbi Yochanan, of course, the Shakish agrees. Even Rabbi Yochanan, who says in general, in general, that you have to, if you know, if you don't know the punishment, even though you know it's not allowed, um, you still bring korban. In this case, is different uh, of bringing a promise. So Peshita, of course, has to be Rabbi Yochanan, because the Shakish, you know. We, well, I might have thought that the Biochanan only says his principle in a law where there would be karet, like Hilchot Shabbat, where if I do it on purpose without witnesses, then it would be karet. So if a person knows it's not allowed, but doesn't know about the law of karet, then he, uh, he still brings a korban. But in the case of false swearing, if I swear falsely, that's a lav only. If I first falsely and, and violate it, it's only a lav. There's no karet. So I might think, since there's no punishment of karet that's even possible, right, that um, if I, uh, 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 um, that in this case would be different. I have to not know it at all. So that's what Abaye is coming to teach us, um, that uh, in Shavat Bitui, you have to know not only that there's, that you have to, you have to not know that there's even a possibility of korban. Uh, you have to not know that, you have to not remember the swear at all in order to be, in order to be able to bring it, to bring it. Okay, so although it's a, we're doing some, a couple of variations, and this one fits into. And so you might have thought in this case of uh, Shavua, that since in everywhere else, when I bring a korban, um, there's also karet attached to it. And this one is the chidush, um, that I bring a korban, even though there's no karet. So I might think that this is a different case. And Abayah teaches us, no, it would be, this would be the same as all other cases. Metibe, we have a question about this. Ezu she got shiwat bitui le she'avar, shim amar yodea ni she shiwa zo asura, aval eni yodea im chayevin aleha korban o lo, chayav. Now, this is a different kind of swear, a uh, swear that I made in the past, um, that, uh, right, I said, you know, I said, I did, I ate eggs, eggs yesterday, and I didn't really, I really didn't eat eggs. 
um, that that person, um, that person brings a korban. But if he doesn't know it at all, right? If he says, "I know that it's not," I know that's uh, not permitted. Um, but I didn't know that I have to bring korban about this. That I still bring a korban. Well, that would be munbaz because he knows that it's not allowed, and he just didn't know about the korban. That fits with munbaz's opinion. Lishana um, acharina, a different version. Mane ilem amun bas peshita hashta bechol la Torah de lav chidushu amar shigat korban shema shigaga hacha de chidushu lo kol sheken el alav rabanan hi veotiubta da baye tiubta. Or another way, see here we managed to uh, to fit everything in with abaye by uh, um, by by saying this this case is an exception and uh, follows munbaz. But we can say it's not an exception and actually uh, say that this case uh, disproves Abaye's opinion altogether. Now, and now we're comparing a different case of Tirumah. Tirumah, a Kohen has to, has to eat. If someone else, a non Kohen, eats Tirumah, then he is Chayab Mita Bideshamayim, which is a little bit less than Karet. And he has, that's on, if he does it on purpose. If he does it by mistake, he has to add 25% fee um, and, uh, and pay that to the Kohen. It's a Chomesh, but a Chomesh is a fifth of the total, which ends up being 24% of what he ate. So that's, that's the law about Tirumah. So everyone agrees in Tirumah, everyone agrees that it's only if you, I didn't know about the law of Tirumah. I didn't know that Kohanim have to eat Tirumah. I thought anyone could eat Tirumah. So that's Abaya said, Hakom Modim. Hakom Modim, man, Rabbi Yochanan. Pishita, why are you saying every, everyone agrees? Um, who are you coming to include? It must be coming to include Rabbi Yochanan. But isn't that obvious? Ki amar Rabbi Yochanan, hechad ika karet, hechad eleka karet, la, mahodetem. Right, if he says that you would have to bring it in a case where there is karet, which is the case of Shabbat, then, all the more so, in the case where there's no karet, which is ours, Tirumah doesn't have karet, it's lesser, then, um, all the more so, he would say that. Mahodet Temai might have thought, Mida bimkom karet omedet, v'ki shagag bimita na'amed ichayev. Kamash malan, right? So, I might have thought that it's a same, similar case, although not exactly the same, uh, the mita bideh shamayim would be the same as karet, and uh, so, I might think the same thing, that he has to know, even if he knows it's not allowed, um, but doesn't know what the punishment is, he would still bring it. And so Abaye comes to teach us that you know, everyone agrees um, that in this case he has to not know it at all. Rava, however, says, Rava disagrees and says it's the same as all the others. And in, even in this case, if he doesn't know, if he knows that Tudumah is not allowed, but doesn't know the punishment for it, he could also bring a Qurban. Okay, um, that was a bit technical. But uh, here is the, is the very interesting case. Amar Rav Huna, haya mehalech baderech o bamidbar, ve'no yodea ematay Shabbat. Now, how could this be a case like this? Is it really possible that, you know, you would not know at all what day of the week it is? It seems that this would have been possible um, before the rise of Christianity. Because before that, um, in pagan times, there was no concept of a week. It's only when Christianity became uh, became popular, and they had a Shabbat, they had a seven-day week, that it became all, went all over the world. Um, and so, you know, I think this, even if you were near, saw people and you asked them what day of the week it is, they wouldn't know. I think it's hard for us to even conceive of such a, living in an environment where Shabbat was so special that the whole week was only something that, that the Jewish community was keeping and everybody else was, was counting time just according to months and parts of months. So that's quite interesting. So this person, um, uh, he has no idea what day of the week it is, but he wants to keep Shabbat. So how does he do it? So he does, he starts from whatever day he is today. He says, today is day one. He counts six days and then keeps Shabbat. Counts another six days and then keeps Shabbat. All right, that's Rav Huna's opinion. He says, no, he should, he should count today as Shabbat and then six days. Shabbat first, and then another six days. What's the essence of their machloket? 
Mar Savar Kibriyatosh al Olam, or Mar Savar Kadam Arishan. One says the six days come first, comes first because of creation. Creation started on Sunday and ended on Shabbat. And the second opinion, Rabbi Chia Barav says, we go by Adam's point of view. He was created just before Shabbat. So his first day was Shabbat, and then were the rest of the days. So is Shabbat the beginning of the week or the end of the week? Okay, very interesting. Um, okay, we have a question now from a, from a Baraita. So Baraita says, same case. You don't know what day it is. So you keep one day for six. So what does it mean one day for six? By love, Moneshisha, Meshamed Yom Echad. Doesn't that sound like one day for six? That means you count six and then one, right? No, Meshamed Yom Echad, Moneshisha. Maybe it means you, you do one and then six. It's ambiguous, so we can't really tell. Wait, if that's what it meant, then it should have said you, you keep one day um, for every six. Uh, it should have said that. It should have said, It should have said, keep one day and then six. Not one, not keep one day for six. That's what it should have said. And we have another Baraita that's even more explicit that says, Okay, so we have a Baraita that says, And that Baraita is explicit. You count six and then one after. And now we have fully rejected the, um, the, that second opinion. And so we stick with Rav Huna that says you count six, and then one. Right? So we go from Briyat HaOlam, the Shabbat is the seventh day of the week. All right. So all that is one, one, one way, one strategy to do it. Rava, however, has a completely different and very interesting strategy. Amarava, Bechol Yom Vayom Ose Lo Kedeh Parnasato Bar Mehu Yoma. Every day might be Shabbat. And so if today's Shabbat, I can't do any work today. Except that I'm going to starve to death if I don't, you know, pick some fruit. So I can pick just enough fruit to live because of Pikoach Nefesh. And that's it. Now, except for that day, that I'll do that for six days. On the seventh day, I won't do any melacha at all. But even all this other six days, I have a safek. It might be Shabbat. So I can't do anything that's extraneous, anything more than what I absolutely need. The Talmud asks, What about that day? He's going to die because he's not prepared anything. Okay, fine. You count, you count six days. On the sixth day, you make a double portion. You keep one for the seventh day. That way, you know, you're doing as minimal as possible every day, and you can still keep one day as Shabbat. Hold it. That doesn't work because maybe that day that you counted as Friday was really Shabbat, and now you're doing something extra. Ella. So rather, every day is the same. Every day, you gather as much food only as you need for that day. And in what, day, in what way will Shabbat be special? You count six days. On the seventh day, you say Kiddush. And that way, you sanctified it. And so you uh, minimize the possibility of error. I mean, you're, you, you basically kept Shabbat because every day is Pikuach Nefesh. Uh, okay, so I mean, what, what is the essence of their machloket? I guess is is Shabbat a subjective or objective, right? Is it objective that Shabbat has to be Shabbat, and no matter when you start it, no, you know, has to go from the time of creation, no matter what, right? Or um, and that would be the first opinion. Or is it subjective to you know whenever you experience it? And so Ravaz seems to say it's an absolute. No matter what, every day might be Shabbat. Whereas the first opinion of Rav Huna sounds like, you know what, you make your own private calendar so it can be subjective. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, May, yeah. Let me finish first. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, if you know, oh, you know what, I, I left yesterday, right? And so I know that that day is not Shabbat because I traveled on that day and I wouldn't travel on Shabbat. So that day, every week, I can do everything I want. I might have thought that I, I, most people don't travel on Shabbat. Most people don't travel on Friday either because you might get stuck. And so I might think that since I know that I left yesterday, so then I can do work 
next week, you know, on the sixth day and the seventh day. So that's what I would have thought. So Rav comes to teach me, that sometimes people really do go travel on Friday because there's a caravan going on Friday and say, I better, I better go, go with them. I'm not going to get another chance um, after this. And so therefore, I have to worry about that. And so I could only do work on one day per week. All right, almost done with, uh, almost done here. Uh, what is the source uh, for the, um, the, the, the law in the Mishnah? That this is the second law of the Mishnah. He knows that there's such a thing as Shabbat, but he doesn't know what uh, day of the week it is. The first Pasuk in Shemot says um, that you should uh, be careful one Shabbat. Shabbat is singular. The second says, Shabbatotai Tishmoru. You should watch and be careful many Shabbatot. So, which one is it? One Shabbat or many Shabbatot? The one that says one is talking about um, one, um, one, one watching for so the first pasuk is talking about one episode of being careful that includes many Shabbatot, um, but it's one, it's one unit. And so that's the first case of the Mishnah where I didn't know about Shabbat at all. And the second pasuk that talks about many Shabbatot is when I know that there's such a thing as Shabbat, then I have to be careful each and every week and I'd be liable each and every week. So that's the contrast of those two sources, those, those two pasukim teach me that that. I can actually reverse the Pesukim and learn it better. That's is V'shamaru, is focus on the verb is plural. So they have a plural verb with one Shabbat. That means you have to do many watchings, one watching for every single Shabbat. That's when you're liable for every, every single Shabbat. But uh, this pasuk, where I have multiple watching is and multiple Shabbatot, that's um, one watching for all the Shabbatot. Um, right, Tishmoru, this is a singular verb. This is Vishamaru, sorry, this is um that. There's one, one Shemira, right, for, ha, for Hashabbat, right, that's the point. Hashabbat means every single one needs it. And this one has Shabbatot in plural, and so the Shemira for all the Shabbatot are included. Okay, so you could take it either way, but the point is that the contrast between the two is uh, where we learn the, that halacha from. Uh, so in sum, uh, today we saw... Um, interesting uh, discussion of ver- various levels of forgetfulness and what would actually be considered uh, forgetting. Is it forgetting altogether or simply forgetting the punishment or even forgetting all the details of the punishment? And, uh, and uh, the last interesting discussion was really about the essence of Shabbat. Is it something that's based on an objective calendar? And so therefore I have to worry about each every day or can it turn into a subjective calendar? I'll start whenever at this arbitrary day and the point is to keep set at once every seven days, even if it happens to be the wrong day, it still is Shabbat, and then he'll adjust when he, once he gets back. Baruch Adonai Olam, Amen ve'amen.